all new today just announced the Easy Run Max 10 G2 series. <laughs> what is up, nerd friends? Welcome back to the Nerd Bench. There is a whole new line of Max 10 items, uh, motors, speed controls, and we're going to talk about that release today. They just got announced this morning. They're going to be available for pre-order very quick here, and they should be available for sale in the next couple weeks. But I am fortunate enough to have gotten my hands on these for like pre-production testing. So what I have in front of you are some pre-production samples that we were sent to get our bash on, so to speak. I've run... Uh, these are my short course truck like I ran my other Max 10s and it has been pretty awesome. The huge change for this new Max 10 series, the speed control is now the G2, the motors are the G3, and with that comes waterproofed censored goodness. Just like we did with the Max 4, these guys are getting the sensor treatment that is waterproof. It uses the same style harness that has been proven on the Axe Combo. Now, like before, these speed controls and motors do not work with the Axe Combos in any way, shape, or form. So get that out of the way right away. Now, there are two new Max 10 G2 speed controls. There's a 140 amp one and there's an 80 amp one a marking on the end that'll let you know which one's which. But they both have four millimeter bullet plugs. They both have the same sensor harness arrangement and they both have the new style of frameless fan, When we'll get into that a little bit later. Now there's a ton of KVs available and two different new motor sizes. Uh, we have the longer style now, what's like a 550 plus motor. It's a 3665, so it's a 36 millimeter diameter and a 65 millimeter length. We also have the 3652s, which are 36 millimeter diameter and a 52 millimeter length, which is much more along the lines of a normal 540 size motor these are like a normal you know brush motor 540 and you know give or take they're just about that same size oh. now let's get into some differences between the 140 amp and the 80 amp and the big difference is the voltage range and obviously the amp rating 2 to 4s is an option 2 to 3s is an option and like any situation with a speed control that is just the speed controls ratings the correct voltage depends directly on the kv of the motor that you're going to use so before you pick your combo, wet motor and speed control go together, make sure you know what voltage you're gonna use. I mean, my opinion has always been that for the most part, there's one good KV per given voltage, or maybe a little bit of a voltage, or a little bit of a KV range for the voltage, but you're not gonna get a good setup that runs awesome on 2S and awesome on 3S, or awesome on 3S and awesome on 4S type of deal. It's just not a reality if you're gonna drive the car hard. Sure, if you take it easy and make some gearing changes, you might be able to get around that, but for the most part, you wanna stick with one voltage is my super pro tip. The speed controls both feature the new frameless fan design and i had one that i took apart so i could show you guys and it, i ran this and then i got it dirty and i wanted to take it apart and see what it looks like inside but you see the fan has no it's like a not a normal cage fan that means we get more built-in heat sink surface less interference from the cage of the fan and you get a lot more airflow these also you know it all gets inside the case so they're very well protected and there's you know you can hear the difference in this fan versus the old fan so all the new g2s have this new frameless fan design which is pretty awesome no they will not fit the other fans very easily i mean you might be able to rig one onto the top or something but these heat sinks are part of the speed controls core design now and that's why this it's a big part of why this frameless design is better that you get more heat sink that gets directly where it needs to be like the previous generations of max series they do work with the lcd programming box the ota bluetooth wireless device as well as the old led program card now I've said this before, I'll say it again. If you have any LED card, it doesn't matter which one, it'll work with these. It plugs into the programming port, but the settings or the numbers that you have on your sticker might not match. So you'll want to use the instruction manual to know what all that means. And one thing that I like to show in most videos is the calibration. A lot of folks don't know that a speed control needs to be calibrated to your throttle output, or if anything changes with your radio, resets, rebinds, whatever, if you're having any problems with operation or it doesn't want to arm or start up, the first thing you should do is try to recalibrate the speed control. And if the calibration doesn't work, it usually points to an output problem from the transmitter, like either the throttle, the brake are changed, neutral shifted way off. A lot of times people turn the brakes off on the radio by accident by tapping these buttons, and that makes it not get be able to finish the calibration process. 
or the throttle channel on the receiver doesn't work. So we have some videos on how to troubleshoot all that. Just look up the Hobbywing official servo test. It'll walk you through all that. But to do the basic calibration, oh, I got to start with the speed control off. So I just, I was on, so I turned it off. You hold the set button and then you, while you're holding it, you turn it on and keep holding the set button. It's going to start to beep. You let go of the button. You tap the button to set the neutral. You pull it to full throttle. You tap the button again. And then you push it to full reverse and tap the button again. And that's, that's all there is to it after that. It works correctly. Beeps once for neutral, twice for throttle, three times for the reverse brake side. So that's you know, quick and easy on the calibration. That covers the basics. All the hard specs and the pre-order link will be down in the description below. So make sure that you check that out. What I wanna do next is connect the Bluetooth programmer and show you guys what all the new settings. One thing that I completely forgot, it's a temperature sensing fan now. So I don't have to unplug the fan during the videos. It only runs the fan when the speed control needs it. There's a temperature sensor inside. So we're gonna, jump in and use the bluetooth module and show you guys what the settings are so it's plugged into the pr dedicated programming port not the receiver wire and i tap this button here to get us in you select your ble hobby wing device and then it gets you in here connected now to look at the speed control settings you don't go to settings you go to parameters i know it's kind of weird but now you know once you get in here it takes just a moment you get all your settings. And I've run the speed control, so these are not the default settings, but we're just gonna talk about what these settings do real quick. Uh, running mode changes if you like, you wanna turn off your reverse, or if you wanna do rock crawl mode, you can get in here and do that. It has forward only with brake, forward with reverse and brakes. That's what we normally are used to, the double tap push brake. And then there's forward with instantaneous reverse, which is like a rock crawler setup. So you can set your lipo cells to whatever cells you use, or you can let it auto calculate in case you switch packs. And then you also have the low voltage cutoff, and this allows you to change how much runtime you get out of your battery or the finish voltage of your battery. Um, there's low, middle, and high. Low is gonna be probably under 3.7, maybe th closer to 3.3 per cell. Middle is gonna be right around 3.7 per cell, and uh, or high is gonna be probably above 3.7 per cell. And the reason we don't have an exact number is because it definitely varies varies with the condition of the battery pack, the plugs, uh, how hard it gets run, how soon after the run you check the battery. So this is just a general safety indicator. If you want the most run time, you set it to low. If you want the most safety, you set it to high. Motor rotation is gonna let you set the direction of the forward on the motor. So if you get this all installed, you do the calibration and you do your testing and you realize that the wheels run the car backwards, use motor rotation to fix that. BEC voltage allows you to change the voltage to the BEC, 6 or 7.4 volts. And then we have maximum brake force and maximum reverse force. These control the max amount of brakes or reverse you have. So if you have touchy brakes, you can turn that down. Or if you're not real good with reverse, you can turn that down as well. Uh, punch level is the response for how quickly you move the trigger. So if you want it to be very one-to-one -one with how you slap trigger, uh, level nine is gonna give you the most instantaneous one-to-one -one feel. Lower than that slows down the throttle response compared to the trigger response. So if you're real twitchy on the trigger, or maybe you don't have great batteries or great plugs and you notice some shutdowns, uh, it doesn't respond when you smash the trigger, turning the punch down will help you know deal with that because it's basically the speed control's way of saying we got a problem. So you can turn the punch down to help get around those. Drag brake. Now this is not brake for drag racing. This is automatic brake that applies when you get your throttle to neutral and it allows you to have like auto coast brakes. So for a very tricky driving condition where you need to get on the brakes right away, you can use drag brake. But for most situations, you're gonna leave your drag brake at zero. It helps keep temperatures down and there's really no reason to have the car doing funny stuff. But some people like a little bit of drag brake, depends on the application. Initial throttle force is kind of like the punch, but just for the first part of the throttle. If let's say you get into your trigger and it feels like you want it to respond sooner to small inputs, you can increase the initial throttle force. And that'll make the very first pulse to the motor higher, so it'll start the motor a little bit harder. And it allows you to fine tune that just when you really bump into the throttle feel. Uh, turbo timing and turbo delay work together and turbo is something you want to use very carefully cautiously if you will and it can create some problems but it can also kind of make the car faster as well so 
the turbo timing applies electronic timing advance, basically meaning that it over it fires the motor faster than it's supposed to be fired to increase the RPM. And this comes at the cost of temperature. So the more turbo timing you run, the hotter it's going to get and maybe the faster it's going to go. Turbo delay controls how long after full throttle that turbo starts to get applied. So the smaller that delay or lower the number is, the quicker it's gonna come on after you get to full throttle. And you actually set it to instant. So as soon as you get to full throttle, it starts applying the turbo. A higher number or longer delay will be a little bit safer because the motor's allowed to be kind of at top RPM for a little bit before it starts to apply the turbo. So when you do make setting changes, don't forget to hit save. We run into some folks that they make the setting changes, but they forget to hit save, and that'll make it so that you know none of your changes happen. When you go to a driver, you're like, hey, nothing changed, and you check it, and it's all still the same. So make sure when you make your setting changes, you hit save and let that all get done. And then when you get done, you can back out of here and disconnect. I hooked up a radio, I connected, because I wanted to show you guys the real-time data output, because this is pretty neat. If you're ever doing like, it's gonna, it's gonna not work, then it's gonna beep, because what it has to do is allow the radio system to take control of the speed control while sharing this information with you. And it does take a moment for that to register. And then once you give it a little throttle, it lights up and you can see everything. So it'll show you like your throttle percentage, the RPM of the motor, oh, let me click that. The current being drawn, the voltage going to the ESC, temperature of the motor and the speed control. So obviously this is just on my bench doing stuff like that. So I can't like crank it around, but you get the idea here. And it's pretty neat uh, for doing benchtop stuff if you want to do some comparisons and things like that. The speed control also has data logging, but unfortunately I had reset everything on this and I have nothing saved in here. Normally the data log shows you some max temperatures for the motor, the speed control, uh, minimum battery voltage, max RPM, it'll, and it'll share you some of the other features of the, you know, basically the versions and stuff like that. But sorry about that, folks. My bad. So that's a quick first look at the new Easy Run Max 10 G2 140 and 80 amp combos that will be coming out. Um, they will be sold separately as well. The speed controls do also work with sensorless motors. Of course, all of our sensor speed controls work with sensorless motors. And these sensored motors will also work with sensorless ESCs, just like any other setup does. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, check down in the description. We put a link that has the information to the actual product pages, that has the hard details, the charts, and all that fun stuff. And by all means, if you're still got questions after that, send us an email, northamerica at hobbywing.com, and we will get your questions answered right away. If you are a fan of podcasts, we also have a podcast. It's called RC Stuff, powered by Hobbywing. You can find it on your favorite podcast service. Just look up RC Stuff. And each and every episode, we give away a free Hobbywing combo. So be sure to give an episode a listen and get yourself signed up to win. Well, that does it for another edition of The Charlie Show right here on the Hobbywing official YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you all next time.